All right, guys, welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. If you were born before 1990, that first part probably made you chuckle. All right, what we've got here, we've got a cow with a perforated white line. That's allowed bacteria to get to the corium. We've got an infection. So let's get started. For the ardent hoof trimming fans, you know what I'm doing right now. This infection has caused the sole to separate a little bit underneath there, so I need to remove this area to allow this to heal. So at this point, we're just starting to uncover the area of separated horn. As I pan across here, you'll be able to see the corium inside there. That is the tissue that actually produces this outside layer, this hard outer layer that the cow walks on. I need to remove this hard outer layer to get that inflamed corium to heal. It's this part of the process here where you have to work with a bit of finesse. That corium underneath is sensitive tissue. You don't want to touch that. This outer layer, there's no feeling in that whatsoever. So there's no pain for the cow as long as you're careful here, just removing that hard outer layer. There's a little bit of a clot in there that does not want to come out. No big deal. We'll get it when we rinse it out at the end. So what causes a defect in the white line like this? Well, it all boils down to pressures. Cows spend a lot of time on concrete. Just like when we spend a lot of time on concrete, it affects our feet. The same thing happens here. When we're on soft ground, the ground takes up some of the pressure from the weight of our body coming down. When we're on concrete, that pressure is applied to the foot. Our, our tissues take on that pressure and that force. Same thing with a cow. Now on her foot, that white line is the junction between the sole of the foot and that outside wall. So when we put excess pressures in the wrong spots, it can cause a perforation, a crack in that white line. When we get a crack in that white line, that allows bacteria to enter and inflame the corium underneath. It's then that the cow begins to experience pain. That crack in the white line itself is not painful, but it's the infection ultimately that can be caused from that bacteria entering. That's the painful, painful part. That's why now what I'm doing is removing that loose horn from around that area. And we're gonna try to get new horn to form there to fill that in. And that way this pain will go away and now we'll have her balanced up after this trim so that that white line can form correctly once again. Now the obvious response to that is, let's get the cows off the concrete and have them on pasture all the time. Problem solved. In an ideal world, we could do that. However, a lot of the cows in this country are raised in northern climates because cows heat stress really easily. 
So we need to have indoor housing for these animals, and consequently, we're going to have concrete floors. They're the easiest to keep clean. The way we can mitigate these problems, though, is to put down some rubber mats in areas with high traffic and to have lots of comfortable stalls for the cows to get in and get off the concrete to rest their feet. And even then, you're going to have that odd problem like we have here today. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish trimming up this cow and get that other claw ready to put a block on that. I'm going to take the pressure off of this injured claw and give it time to heal. Here you can get a good look of that affected area, and you can see the area of horn that we've removed. Now if you look along the margins of this, you can see some thin white edges. Looks like loose horn, that is soft tissue. I don't want to remove that right now, or I'll make this problem worse. It's not going to affect anything with the healing, as you'll see at the end of this video when we bring her back in for the recheck. The powder I'm adding now is called salicylic acid. It's used to prevent the bacteria that cause digital dermatitis from colonizing on this lesion. Now, the way that it does that is it creates a low pH environment. The bacteria don't thrive in that, and that way we don't have to worry about that problem. I'm going to get this foot down, and we're going to let her go, see how she's walking now. But don't go anywhere, because we've got the follow-up included in this video from four weeks later. Now we're back four weeks later. Now notice my buddy Jake in the lower right hand corner. He's trying to help get that cow in the chute and the best way he knows how is by biting my mud flap. It's not gonna work, Jake. It's not gonna work. We got her in the chute. As I'm starting to lift this cow up, another cow decides she wants to go for a ride as well. But it's only one at a time, ladies, one at a time. Let's get this foot picked up. and it appears like we were able to accomplish our goal. This lesion looks healed. Remember those white little thin margins I talked about earlier in the video? You can see that's all firmed up now. We've got new horn underneath that. I can safely remove any loose horn now because that corium is covered. Got good hard horn over the top. Take one more look at this foot before I put it down. I could continue to trim away and make this completely white, but I don't want to do that. I'd be thinning that sole out, and that sole is already thin in those areas. In fact, I'm going to leave that block on for a couple more weeks to allow it to get a little thicker. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one. I caught you. I caught you. I thought you were getting away with it.